There are too many tutorials on the internet. You look at YouTube and for any given thing you want to learn, there are probably a thousand tutorials on the most hyper niche, specific topic that you can imagine, especially in the art sphere. Everyone is competing to create the quintessential tutorial, but how about the worst tutorial? A tutorial that is so bad that it's fundamentally wrong. Welcome to How to Create Pixel Art by Not Making Pixel Art. First off, what is pixel art? Pixel art is a digital art form where in the smallest unit that you can visually manipulate, the pixel, is intentionally visible. Think of early video games, where the art style was born of a necessity due to hardware limitations, but is now used as an intentional aesthetic choice. Now there is some debate as to what exactly constitutes pixel art, because there are different levels of pixelization, and as it approaches the point of visual fidelity where each individual pixel is harder to parse out, it's hard to draw a clear line as to when an artwork leaves the realm of pixel art and just enters digital art. So now that we know what pixel art is, how do you make it? Well, with pixels. Let's start off with way too many. After all, if we start with what something isn't, maybe we could walk ourselves in the other direction to what it is. About 4 million pixels should do it. If the defining characteristic of pixel art is simply that it lacks pixels, then there is nothing to stop us from just painting our scenes like we would normally and then simply removing pixels. Even if it is ruthlessly inefficient, it does surprisingly end up being a workflow that has some positives going for it. The workflow allows for a lot of detailing that you don't actually have to finish because once you pixelate it, it sort of becomes this illusion of detail. Additionally, it sort of acts as a band-aid for any line art or minor mistakes that made it through to the final stage of the image because the pixelization fills in a lot of gaps and removes any small bits like that. One drawback I've noticed from this method, other than the obvious inefficiency born from a refusal to learn and a lack of respect for the art form, is that you sort of run into this issue where the pixelated reference is a little bit blurry, so unfortunately you're not actually done once you've destroyed all your hard work. Darn. A simple sharpening filter will mostly fix this, but I find that, at least in Krita, it's a little bit too strong, and you end up with too high of a contrast in some areas. So what I like to do is to make a copy of your artwork, sharpen that, and then lower the opacity slightly until you find a good mid-ground between clarity and overly contrasted, as the layers sort of mix with each other. Also, as a side note, before you do any major destructive edits like this, you should always save another copy of your work. I forgot to do this and I ended up losing the original painting, so uh, don't be me. The second and probably biggest drawback from this method is that there's a limit to how pixelated you can make your artwork because you're allowing the program to decide how to simplify the information that you're providing it. You're not intentionally selecting the color, value, and position of each pixel, which means that as you reduce the total amount of pixels, the software you're using has to guess more and more to the point where the image will eventually just be unreadable. Usually well before it would normally become unreadable if you were to actually engage with the art form from the ground up. Then I'll usually merge the layers and paint over anything left that doesn't look quite right. And now you should have your pixel art version of whatever you painted.